In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the Pure Maths Paper 3, specifically Paper 3.1 from Cambridge A-Level exams from 2024. If you're looking for any other question from this paper, you should find a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for any other paper, look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But of course, this is in the classroom, we're on YouTube, so go ahead and take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, watch at 2x speed, whatever you find useful. If you find any of my videos useful, uh, I would appreciate like, subscribe, or sharing it with someone else doing the A-level exams. Question six is a fairly long question, all revolving around this equation here. Uh, but they've split it up into multiple parts to hopefully make it a little easier for us. Part A, um, asks us to draw a graph or, or two graphs to show that this equation has uh, exactly one root. Now what that means is they want us to draw this function on the left and they want us to draw this function on the right. And if they equal each other, if they have exactly one root, they'll equal each other exactly once. Or we'll get a, some sort of drawing where they, they cross one time. They only touch one time in our picture. So that's what we'll do. There's only two marks for this. So you are expected to be able to just draw this straight away, um, a, a cosec function, and you're expected to be able to draw an e to the x function. I'll do it a little slower. I'll, uh, I'll try and show you where a cosec function comes from. And to that point, it comes from being, well, it's the same as one over sine x, or in this case, sine x over, over two. So I'm gonna draw a few functions here. Uh, I'll forget x over 2 for the moment. We will just draw, first of all, I'll just draw sine. So there, something like that, sine. Crudely drawing is fine. Now 1 over, let's uh, put it in here as a sine x. 1 over sine x, um, what will that look like? 1 divided by 0, well let's continue this on here. 1 divided by 0 gets difficult, it approaches 0. It approaches infinity, sorry. And if I start at the, the um, minus side of the world, it approaches it um, in, in the mi it approaches minus infinity. So it would actually look something like, it would head off down to infin minus infinity. On this side up here, it would approach, as we go right to left, it would approach infinity, positive infinity. Looks something like this. This point here is one. So one divided by one is still one. So they'll agree here, as it gets smaller, one divided by a smaller number will actually go up. So we get something that goes up like that, and as I said, approaches infinity. Same happens here, it, as it gets smaller, it will get bigger. And as it gets near zero, it'll approach infinity. So it'll actually go off straight up to infinity there. Down here, it will go off to infinity. Again, here, one divided by minus one is minus one, and it'll approach minus infinity, approach minus infinity. Doesn't doesn't curve out and go like this. It goes straight down, all the way down, all the way up to infinities. Um, and th this is happening the whole way down. So it's okay for you to remember this. It's okay for you not have to draw a sine. Let me try and take it out here. And that's what the examiner expects. They expect you to remember that this is what cosec looks like. Um, yeah, let's rub that out as well. So this is a cosec uh, of just x. Now we're gonna, we're gonna change it to x over two. Actually, let's put in some of those numbers back in. This was pi here, and this one here was two pi, and here was three pi, and here would be a four pi. And again, this is just for cosine x, uh, cosec of x, not x over two. So what happens when we divide by two? Um, it's okay for us just to remember everything gets stretched. You divide by two, everything gets stretched. But you can think of why um, what's inside the cosec, when it's pi, it goes off to infinity. So if we're dividing them by two, I'll draw it again up here. If we're dividing them by two, to get to pi, we'd have to put in two pi here. So uh, we would still get the same shape like this. It is, except here would now be 2 pi. Instead of being pi, 
it would be now 2 pi, here would be 4 pi, and so on. Um, and then to answer the actual question, because this is all me just waffling now, let's draw one last graph for this one, and then we'll rub out some of this and do the right side. Uh, one last graph here. They only want between, between 0 and pi. They don't want to go as far as 2 pi. So we'll only go up to pi here. And uh, what that would look like is it would start at infinity up here and it would come down. Um, I've really zoomed in here too much, sorry. It would come down here and this would be at, the, at 1. That's what the, the left side would look like between 0 and pi. So any, any drawing like that would be fine. Now let me uh, let me rub this off this off and we'll draw the right side and we'll add it into this one here. Okay, how do we draw the right hand side? Um, I can't explain in this time where ex comes from, so we are expected to know that looks something like this. Uh, e to the power of zero is at one, so that's a point one. And it just tries to hit the x-axis, never quite makes it. That's ex. Ex minus three. That's fairly simple to do. We just move everything down three. So if we put in a dotted line here, this would be at minus three. And um, move one down three, we'd get to minus two. Uh, let's see, minus two. And we just have something that was like this. Same, same shape, everything. Sorry if it doesn't look like that. Um, and that's it. We just want to put this in here. So let's uh, let's just see what pi would look like. So if we put pi in here, e to the pi minus three, um, I would actually get twenty. So uh, let's see. Maybe this is twenty up here. Um, this is where pi happens. Uh, where would it cross here? That would be at uh, let's see, e to the x minus three equals zero. That'd be e to the x equals three e to the x equals, oh sorry, and natural log of both sides, x equals natural log of three. We put that in, we'd get, that's about one. So um, this happens at around one, which I guess we can draw, that's about three here. So uh, two, one. So to draw this guy, he, he starts off at the zero point, he starts off with minus two. Here's one, so there'd be minus two somewhere down here. Again, don't need to draw it over the infinity, just as it comes up here, comes up at 1.1, it hits somewhere around here, and it goes off up to 20 up here. So that's that's my rough drawing of both sides. Um, again, this, this is just my drawing here, zoomed in on this world. You don't have to be that accurate, by the way. Just getting the rough shape of this coming down, the rough shape of this going up as an exponential. I don't think I've done that very well. I tried to make my axes match. And then um, you might want to add some sort of English just saying they only cross once, therefore there is a, only one root. In part B, they ask us to verif verify by calculation that the answer, the root here, lies between one and two. So my drawing actually seems to show it's somewhere between one and two, but it's very rough, my drawing. So verify that it does go between one and two. So how do you do this? Uh, how I like to do this is, I like to take both sides, uh, how have I done this here? On the right side, cosine, cosec x over two, and I like to take e, e to the power of x minus three, and I just fill in the numbers they've asked, one and two. So basically I fill a one into here, and uh, what do I get out? I get 2.086. I fill two in, and I get 1.1884. I put one in here, I get minus 0 0.2817. And I put two in, I get 4.389. And what does that tell us? So when I put one in, this, uh, let's write these in, this is cosine, uh, co sorry, cosec of x over two. This one here is e to the power of x minus three. Okay, at one, cosec is bigger than e, e, to, e to the power of x minus three. It's at two, it's at minus 
2. So at this point, that's at uh, 2, and that's at minus 0 0.2. Something like that. So it's above it. Uh, cosec is above this one. So at 1, uh, the left side is above the right side. At 2, what happens? At 2, it's now below it. It's less than it. At 2, it's down here. And at point 0.2, this one is up here. And you just need to say something like that in English. Um, at point 0.1, uh, cosec is, is greater than e to the power of x. Um, at point 0.2, at x equals 2, it's less than. They've crossed over at some point. Any, anything like that, to be honest. Uh, that'll answer part B. In part C, they give us this uh, iterative formula here. Uh, uh, xn plus 1 is equal to all this with, with an xn in it. And they ask us to show this, like find this. Basically they're saying, start here and find where we got this. But they're giving it to you just in case you, you can't do it, so you can do the next part. It's very short. We just play around with this function until it looks like this, without the x, without the n plus 1 and the n. They can just be x's. So how do we do that? Um, we just try and get x on its own. And they, there's plenty of clues here. Uh, they don't touch this one. They leave this one alone. So that's a clue. So really, just let's get this, this x on its own. And that is the easier looking one. Uh, rearrange it here so we have e to the x is equal this guy still. x over 2 and the 3 moves over. Plus 3. Already looking nearly identical to it. Take the natural log of both sides and we get x is equal natural log of cosec uh, x over 2 plus 3. And that's, that's it. That's it. That's your, it's only one mark. You're getting one mark for this. Really, they were just making sure you were able to do that before moving on to the next part. And that's to, to use this iterative formula to find, uh, to find the answer. I've, I've um, rubbed out the picture now, but to find where that root was. Um, and they give us advice to start the initial value to use of, uh, I'll start here. The initial value, we call that x0, is 1.4. Start off with that and find um, x1, x2, x3. You should be used to doing this question, it comes up every year. And we get that x1 is equal to, just here, use this formula, x1. So n must be, <coughs> n must be zero now, because uh, zero plus one is one, is equal to natural log cosec x0 when you have we have x0 so uh, let me put it in as x actually let me leave it blank just for a second because I'm going to show you a trick to do on the calculator so you can put 1.4 in here or I could roll x0 to explain it either uh, divide by 2 plus uh, 3 okay but I'm going to show you how to do it on a calculator I'm not going to zoom in or anything on the calculator but uh, because uh, everyone's calculator is different, um, but how you, every calculator will work, uh, will do this, because there's a lot of writing in this question, it'll take a long time, but if you learn this trick, it's, it's much easier. So on your calculator, put in 1.4 equals, and that's it, nothing else, 1.4 equals. What's that, what that has done is, now your calculator remembers the answer is 1.4. So again, now to do the next part, we write all this on your calculator, natural log, you're gonna to have to use one over one over sine x, at least my calculator does. And what I put in here is answer. There's a button on my calculator that says answer. And what that does, it uses the last answer it found, which was 1.4. And if I do all that, I have all the answers brought out here. If I do all that, I will get the answer on my calculator of uh, four decimal places they want, 1.51, Five six. What's great about that is we can now do the next one by just pressing the button, pressing the equals button, because the calculator still has this formula in it, and in that formula is answer. So when you press equals again, it just does it again, but instead of using this as an answer, it now uses this one. So it does all of that again, identically and it gets the next answer of 1.4940. And don't worry if you, if you don't understand what I mean there. You can do this slowly every time. You can do it by hand, slowly every time. But 
learn how to do it and once you put it takes longer to put this equation in but once you learn it to do it, you can just go and get all the answers you want you can go down to the 20th answer very quickly and um, so x3 will end up equaling 1.4978 x4 will equal 1.4978 Seven one, and I stopped there because that's all I needed because they wanted us to find the answer correct at two decimal places so here it would imply it's 1.52 here it'd be 1.49 here it's 1.50 because um, the 7 and here it's 1.50 again so I can now because of these two are now agreeing, I can say the answer is roughly, is roughly 1.50. If you stayed going on, you'd get the answer more and more exact. In fact, I used that trick, pressed the equals, I think about, I don't know, 12, 15 times, something like that, let's, let's say X, 15, I, I'm not sure. And the calculator fills up, it, it, gets us, it gets the answer correct to, is that 10 decimal places? Four nine seven two one nine eight two four. I think that's correct to, however, nine decimal places. <coughs> if you have a better calculator, you can go further. But anyway, um, that's the answer to part D. Oh, there was there's one last part. I don't see it on the screen there, but it's um, basically it says how many of these did you have to do? What's the smallest number you had to do to get the answer? And that was the one I did, uh, the fourth one. You have to do four iterations to get the answer. <coughs> That's because you, you're allowed to stop once, once you get the same answer twice. So as I said, that was 1.52, 1.49, 150, 150. So I had to do four to be sure. After three, it did get the right answer after three, 1.50, but I couldn't be sure it, it wasn't gonna change again until I got the same one over and over. I, oh, sorry, the, so the answer to the last part is just four. Okay, if you have any questions about any of that, there was lots of things in that question, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.